Hey guys, my name is Anuradha. Welcome to our channel GK Guidance and Knowledge. Happy morning to all of you. Today we are going to discuss about a most important topic and most popular topic which is women's security. Let's begin with the question. Our today's question is women's security must not be predicted on the restrictions of their rights and the freedom. We have to comment on it. It means we need to provide the details about the women's security and the status of the women's and then restrictions on their rights and freedom and way forward and conclusion. Let's see the significance that can be asked in GSP paper 1 under the headings of silent features of Indian society role of women issues related to women. There is a quotation you can use it in your answer. The betterment through the progress of a nation is its treatment of its women said by Swami Vivekanand which is very prominent personality in our history. So uh, let's see the introduction. Here is the graph you can use it in your answer provided by the crime against women by crime head 2019 data about 1,25,298 means 30.8% cases and registered under the section 498A then assault on women 88,367 which is 21.8% then 72,780 which is 17.9% these are cases of kidnapping and abduction then 32,033 which is 7.9% rape cases under the section 376. Then our introduction would be India is a country where women were worshipped and no religious activity were considered to be completed without their participation but today we need to protect them. According to the National Crime Record Bureau NCRB, rape occurs in every 16 minutes in India and according to this report India's capital also called sometimes rape capital of the country which is very bad for our country's reputation and women's also. Then what is the status of women in India? Uttar Pradesh, the most populated state in India, rank first in the sexual harassment followed by Rajasthan and Maharashtra. Delhi is the most surveillance city in the world but lacking behind in the women's safety. People always blame on girls to wear clothes of their choice like jeans. Parents doesn't allow their, them to go out after 6 p.m. and late night walk. Then politicians also give less importance to the crime related to women. For example, Karnataka Home Minister make joke on rape. During COVID-19, many child marriages happen in Odisha make girls vulnerable for the domestic violence sexual abuse, marital rape, physical and marital harassment. Then let us see the restrictions on the woman's right. Gender stereotype, social discrimination, additional workload and continuous sexual and abusive harassment. Then lack of education and reference to the male child. Sorry, it was preference to the male child. Then no incentives for the household work. No equal wages for equal work. No economic and social freedom and inequality in the decision making with women. Then women are not allowed to do late night jobs. Then private companies give preference to male employees with a stupid excuse which is women get pregnant and take pregnancy leave. Then there is violence against women. Let's see one in three women throughout the world will experience physical and sexual violence by partner or sexual violence by non-partner. Let's see. 29.8% in WHO region of the America, then 23.2% high income countries, then 25.4% in WHO European region, then 37% in WHO Eastern Mediterranean region, then 36.6% in WHO African region, then 37.7% then in Southeast Asian region, then 24.6% in Western Pacific region. Then we have 10 laws for the Indian women's protection. First, the Equal Premonition Act 1976. Then second one is the Dowry Prohibition Act 1961. Then Immoral Trafficking Prevention Act 1956. The Preconception and the Prenatal Diagnostic Techniques Act 1994. The Medical Termination of the Pregnancy Act 1971. The Commission of Sati Prevention Act 1987, then the Child Prohibition of, then the Prohibition of Child Marriage Act 2006, then Sexual Harassment of Women at Workplace Act 2013, after the Nirbia case, then the Maternity Benefits Act 1961, then final one is the Hindu Succession Act 1956. 
then our way forward would be government need to properly implement the schemes like one stop center ndso nirbhaya fund project then mission shakti fast action on the helping number 1090 and the national commission for women then melmoth committee suggest amend section 406 and 498a of ipc indian penal code then attitude change in the society is needed that stop treating women as a commodity then strict enforcement of law and sensitization of enforcement agencies and the society then mohalla committee recommended development of a community based strategy of neighborhood committee then needs then we need reforms in the ncw act 1919 then increase women's participation in the police army and other fields then increase women's connectivity with ngos and self help groups also emphasis on the women's education like beti bachao beti padhao scheme and empowerment of women then strictly implement of the law related to the violence against the women and change patriarchal mindset of the men then also eradicate the gender discrimination in the society then aware women about their rights which is article 14222 then our conclusion would be all these steps proper reforms and implementation of laws can promote women's empowerment for inclusive development and holistic growth of a country women's participation is important it also help us to achieve sustainable development goal 5 which is gender equality and sustainable development goal 10 which is reduce inequalities and also improve and it also improve our rank in gender equality index which is 140 out of 156 this is like a quotation you can use it in your answer empower women too much that they can protect themselves and can raise voice against unjust so that's it for today thank you for listening don't forget to like share and subscribe also